black exploitation. I say it wasn't what it could have been. It wasn't what it should have been. And um, many people saw it and they viewed it critically in a pejorative sense, you know, where it was just exploitation, sex and violence. And it had a, a theme of um, hate. The guilty pleasure for me as a, as a, as a, a person who grew up on not seeing any bold blackness. We enjoyed it because it was an opportunity to see sexy black women, sexy black men. But overall, it was too much pimps, pushers, and prostitutes. What the hell do you think I'm running here, chicken coop? Gentlemen, this is my family. Mm -hmm. These all prime cut bitches, $238,000 worth of dynamite is Fort Knox and Penny. Candy did $17,000 last year. Velvet, Miss Sophisticate, did twenty. dollars Used to be a Paris model. <laughs> Jess and Annette each did twenty-two five. dollars Show them your wares, bitch. That's taffy. <laughs> This bitch grows $37,500 working part-time and shit. Her clients think she's too good to fuck. They call her Colonel Sanders because she's finger-licking Oh, mama. You got yourself a family. From a sociopolitical perspective, it was disappointing because it could have been so much more. Now, there were some elements in some films that I said, wow, if we could just, I like to use the term, um, make this more edutaining, where we can be entertained and educated, where our consciousness is being raised. There's some golden moments in some of the films. For example, the dinner scene in Trick Baby. Uh, it's you liberals who have lifted them up, Howard. Paul, you conservatives make a mistake. You can't afford to strangle hope in people. Without hope, people become dangerous. No, Howard, you liberals have let them invade our society. You give them jobs, political jobs. Oh, you missed the point. It's only the smart ones we move up. A lot of what I talk about, what film is, and how it's used to perpetuate white supremacy and the persistence of whiteness, We have this thing that's going on now that makes this society continue, and that's called the illusion of inclusion. Oh, you know, we have to move them up. If we leave a smart one in the ghetto, he might develop into a leader against us. But if we raise him up into white society, we neutralize him. He feels compelled to try to act like us. He loses his identity and uh, his racial anger, if he has any. He becomes alien to his brothers. They realize he sold them out and they grow to hate him. He becomes worthless to them and safe for us. Uh, no, thank you. In fact, in his love for the creature comforts, except for his color, he's become one of us. The fact that we have a, a black president, we have people of the economic level, Oprah Winfrey, Bill Cosby, Eddie Murphy, and, and, and to reach that level, you, you, you think, oh, it's not like it used to be. But those are just exceptions. The general rule is that you still have so many people who oppressed and not able to reach that level. And that scene goes into the reason why. Damn, I've known you since you were a baby. I don't recognize you anymore. You can't. I'm off my knees now. I like my man with a gun. Janie, the nonviolent program is dead. Killed by white violence April 4th, 1968 in Memphis. Uptight is a film where many people say, well, is that black exploitation? Uptight is one of the antecedents of black exploitation. To kill a man, to take a human life. You have to have an authority. 
You have to have a legality. What legality? The white man's? Now you listen, Jesus, Holy Ghost, or whoever you represent, since the first black man was brought to this country, the white man's laws have propped up slavery, lynching, and castration. Are you instructing me for Christ's sake? I've been fighting that mess all my life. You don't talk to me about legality. Your laws were not made to protect black people. Corbin, wait, man. Don't, don't be blind. Today, we can make better laws. Today, there is a conscience that can be reached. We don't believe it. Not in this society. In that film, it told about the reaction after the death of our beloved Martin Luther King, um, April 4th, 1968. And there was this revolutionary group that wanted to take action. They wanted blood, brother. They wanted payback. I love the scene where um, they're going back and forth and they're talking about violence. And one of the characters, what he says about violence, I thought, I think that's very important. Kyle, let gentler souls than ours build your utopia. You hate guns. You hate violence. So did we, remember? Our whole program was born out of nonviolence. You name me a people in all history less violent than we were. Name a people more patient, a people more forgiving of insult and abuse. But Whitey took up that gun. Why do you use violence? Why do you use the mother of violence? We love Johnny. We needed him. Whitey's money bought his death. This man stands between me and every choice I've made. Uptight's important to watch because addressed in the film is the give and take about, you know, what's the best way for us to gain as a group, to gain the rights that we were entitled to have, that we should be born with. Is it turn the other cheek or is it revolutionary? That back and forth was going on. Um, Frank Severa, his character offers one way politically doing it in a legal way. Um, Richard Williams, um, uh, Raymond St. Jock, their thinking was, no, we tried it that way. They, they slew the dreamer. They slew the man who was about passive resistance. That didn't work. So enough of that nonsense. And, and that's why you should see uptight. Do you think it is by accident that every time a black leader appears on the horizon with any kind of cleverness or charisma, he's cut down? Malcolm, Martin, Medgar. I want you to arm yourself. And I've asked Josh to be your bodyguard. Another scene I found great was the scene in Brothers which was based on um, the George Jackson story. We had Bernie Casey and Ron O'Neill. They're in prison together. And Ron O'Neill is a character who's going to help raise the consciousness of Bernie Casey's George Jackson character. You better go to them books and find out how to play some talk, nigga. Cause I do happen to be the world's champion at this game called Nigga Bridge. You know this game does have its limitations. <laughs> But you are very good at it. I don't really think my books can help me much in this cause. <laughs> yeah, they have proved instructive in other areas. Oh, is that right? Yeah. You know, I'm going to turn you on to some chess. It's a hip game. Chess is the slow-ass game is what it is. You going somewhere? And George Jackson, as Bernie Casey, is portraying him as someone who Ron O'Neill says, hey, you, you know, you're just going to be a, a regular in. You're not going to get anything out of this. You're just going through 
the motions. Seems to me you've been doing time instead of using time. Let me tell you something, man. In here, time is time. That's right. Yeah, you're going to shut your mind. Be a dumb nigga like you've been all your life. I'm tired of your rap. See, I got your dumb nigga, Nance. Now, you raise up off me, you hear? You raise up off me, man, because no matter how much shit you talk, you in here just like me. No, no, not just like you, man. I've been where you are. No focus, no hey, control. Wait a minute, Nance. You angry? Yeah, I'm mad. Right, right, full of anger. But who are you angry at? Why are you angry? Do you know? The answers are here, man. And he's throwing all these books at him, and he mentions Fanon. This is where the answers are, man. Find out who you really mad at. Find out who's really been kicking your ass, how they've been kicking your ass, and how you can stop, at least stop helping them. Just to capture the names of the books, Fanon was like required reading The Wretched of the Earth and uh, uh, Black Skin's White Ma Mask. And, and that scene was powerful for me. And I, I thought uh, even the, the Get That film showed what black exploitation could have been if we had m more films dealing with these kind of figures and, and doing it in a way where um, it's entertaining, but you're also raising the consciousness about people who are being oppressed, being victimized, but finding a way to speak truth to power. When we talk about the films that came out during that era, well, we had the black westerns, we had the black gangsters, the black private eyes, we also had the black horror films. Now you take William Marshall, he did Blackula. This is important, if you know anything about William Marshall, he changed what they originally wanted Blackula to be, something just light, by the numbers. They even wanted to make the character's name Amos Brown. The character's name was um, Andrew Brown when they handed me the script. Mm -hmm. And Andrew Brown, as you may know, is a character in uh, Amos and Andy of ages ago. That was not the finest thing that ever could have happened to us. Did the producers really, were they thinking about Andrew Brown from Amos and Andy, do you think, in well, 1972 when they did Black Hill? That was the name of the character, okay. and I think they were old enough to know about Amos and Andy and the damaging effect that it had on us. I think there was something of a resentment on the part of many producers who uh, sensed this outcry mm -hmm. and didn't want our voices to ring resonantly about and create a, a new kind of genre. But there's a scene in Scream, Black Lives Scream that was so powerful because he's walking down the street and this black prostitute makes advances to him. Good evening. Want some company? I beg your pardon? I said, do you want some company? He says, no, thank you. Forget it. And then two black pimps come, and they want to know, what's, what's your problem, brother? You don't like women? Say, what is it we got here? Don't you dig our merchandise? What's the matter, man? Don't you dig girls? Or is that the reason for the case? It sure is a sweet-looking thing. Hey, man, with threads like that, it figures you've got to be loaded, right? So uh, why don't you pass some this way, brother? Hey, faggot! We're talking to you. What is it you want? What is it you want? Shit. You're bad, man. All of it. Are we going to have to become antisocial and kick your ass? You dig? I'm sorry. I don't have any bread with me. And as for kicking my ass, I strongly recommend that you give it careful consideration before trying. You jive, mother. Either you give it up, or we're going to take it out on your black ass. You made a slave of your sister. You're still slaves, imitating your slave masters. Hey, sucker. <laughs> the reason why I love the dialogue in that scene, because it's talking about how we need to respect our black women 
and not get caught up, as I said, about the how we should go to the Bible. We, we don't need to get caught up in someone else's game. We don't need to mimic our slave masters or people who were our slave masters. We don't need to mimic them. We need to be transform transformative. We need to be better than that. We need to show the world what the world could be like if people cared for each other and respected each other. And one thing that always impressed me about um, Dr. Ben, Dr. Ben said something that always struck me. He said, show, show me, me how you treat your woman and I show you the condition of your race. Thank you. Another uh, very important film was um, Five on the Black Hand Side. Now from beginning to end, that's a film that had many moments. The films I mentioned previous to this one, there were segments, golden segments. Five on the Black Hand Side was, I remember when we were at the paper, and um, we said, um, you gotta go see Five on the Black Hand Side. What was so revolutionary about it was that it was a breath of fresh air. You've been comfortized, blackularized, and superflied. You've been macked, hammered, slaughtered, and shafted. Now we want to turn you on to some brand new jive. You're going to be glorified, unified, and filled with pride when you see five on the black hand side. Here's a film based on a popular play. Brock Peters, Michael Tolan co-produced it. Oscar Williams directed it, and it was very nationalistic. And the messages in it were about respecting the black woman, the importance of the black family, and don't take your squabbles and, 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 and publicize them in the street. Be about family, unity. Next thing I know, you be telling me you came up here just to build a strong family. Well, yeah. Yeah, otherwise I'd have moved out like you did. Hey, man, who I sleep with is my own personal business. Oh, no, man, no. Who you sleep with, the first face you see in the morning is very significant, man. That's where you get your energy from. It's your mirror, Booker. That is your mirror. Can you dig it? And that, that was a, that, that's a film. It did well, along with a film like Claudine. It was something that was... Um, one of the golden moments of that era. I can't understand you, Booker T. Instead of you trying to convince me to give in to your father, you should be trying to encourage me to stand up to him. But, Mama, the two of you been together all these years. Only because I kept my mouth shut all these years. Oh, Mama, I know the old man could be a little rough at times, but I thought you loved him. I do. I love your father. In fact, we all love your father, but nobody can live with him. And all the time I thought that the two of you were really a beautiful couple. You got a lot to learn about women, son. Never make a woman do anything to make her lose respect for herself. The last film is um, maybe, <laughs> in many ways, the film that epitomizes what black exploitation should have been about and could have been about is the spook who sat by the door. The controversial best-selling novel now becomes a shocking screen reality. The story of the first black agent in the CIA. Whoever they select will be the best known spy since 007. Their first mistake was letting him in. That film, based on Sam Greenlee's book, and um, directed by Ivan Dixon. That film highlighted an individual, a black individual, who was going to play the game, learn from the masters, the oppressors, how it works, and then bring those tactics back to the community. He turned gangs of ghetto kids into a highly trained guerrilla army. We live off the land. 
to match technology with spontaneity and improvisation. Men against machines, brains against computers. Now, if you don't think it can work, you check out Algeria, Kenya, Korea, and Iran. Can you dig it? That is dynamite. And the reason why you don't hear much about it, they don't talk much about it, is because that's one of the films that really scared the, um, I feel, the powers that exist in this country. They didn't want to see films like that come out. That's what I was talking about um, when we talk about technology. These are the kind of films they're afraid of and they want to make sure that we don't have this subversive element in motion pictures develop with um, black folk. Does. The ghetto is a jungle, always has been. Understand, you cannot cage people like animals and not expect them to fight back someday. It has always been an army occupation here, with police badges and uniforms. Huh? You and me, a cop and a social worker, we are keepers of this goddamn zoo. The streets have to be safe. Safe for who? You're here to protect property, not lives. Well, that's what it's all about, isn't it? You worked hard to get what you got, didn't you? And you want to keep it just like I do? Bullshit. Listen, you think because you got a badge and I got a couple of degrees, that makes a difference? Do you know what white folks call people like you and me in private? Niggas, dogs. Hi, I'm Charles Woods, and you're watching Real Black. The one night. It's the biggest television audience in the world. It's the Oscars. Where do you think that name came from? Hmm? That brother, Oscar Michelle. When you watch movies, you may get some militancy, some so-called blackness, but overall what you're going to get green-lighted and the gatekeepers are going to let come through are those motion pictures which perpetuate the status quo.